Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are talking about everyone's favorite tier 10 Russian battleship, the Kremlin. What did you think it was, the Slava? But the Kremlin has quite the interesting history with the game, and is often one of the first ships brought up when Russian bias gets discussed. Which, Kremlin, when it was released, yes, was utterly broken. I don't think you'll find very many people that will dispute that. But since then, Kremlin has gone through several nerfs and changes that has really just beat the utter crap out of it. And I talked about this a little bit on the video talking about Russian bias, but I didn't get too much into Kremlin because I didn't really have time in that video to go over and not, that video not be a 40-50 minute video. But today we are. So we're going to talk about the Kremlin, talk about what used to make it broken, how it was changed, and what the Kremlin is today in World of Warships. Um, I am, of course, running Kutsuzov on Kremlin right now with the build you're seeing on screen. And Kutsuzov is something that, in my opinion, takes the Kremlin from being, you know, a bit strong in what it's strong in to being almost broken in terms of survivability, but more on him in a minute. Anyway, the Kremlin itself without Kuznetsov or any commanders on it, what does she have if you don't know? Well, she has nine 457mm guns. Now, 457mm are, of course, 18-inch guns. They aren't big enough to overmatch 32mm of armor. You need 460mm to do that. And they have a pretty nice reload time of 29 seconds if you take the reload module on your Kremlin, which I imagine most Kremlin players would. And the AP hits like a friggin' truck. It is that Russian high-velocity AP coming out of these barrels at 800 meters a second. So fast and such a heavy shell that in real life, if these guns actually did exist, I think they could only get through, I think, what was it, 10 15 rounds before they would have to re-rifle the barrels or replace the barrels on the on the gun in real life. Uh, yeah, they are, of course, pretty nutso. But, of course, in-game they, they can exist. And she has a maximum firing range of 20 kilometers base, 20.7 to be exact. And most Kremlin players won't take the range mod because of the accuracy of the guns. Now, back in the day, and this is what made the Kremlin broken... Back in the day, the Kremlin could actually accurately hit at 20 kilometers. I'm not sure if the Soviet battleship dispersion gimmick wasn't working properly back in the day, or she was just too overtuned, but you could reliably rail ships at 20 kilometers and pretty much ensure at least six shells would hit. Which six shells of Kremlin's guns, that, that'll wreck your ship pretty darn bad, especially if, if it catches your broadside at that type of range. And, good God, I mean, just go look at some of the videos from Kremlin back in the day when it was released. Just utterly removing ships at maximum range. And the Soviet d uh, dispersion gimmick, if you don't know, the closer you are to the target, the better dispersion you have. The further you away you are from the target, the crappier dispersion you have in Soviet battleships. Ideally, you want to be from about 13 kilometers in. That way you have nice dispersion, you're encouraging players to push, and you're playing to the ship's strong suit, which is close in tanking. Bow on. But, again, when the ships came out, it, it didn't really matter. She was just dunking on ships at maximum range. Today, there have been a slew of nerfs to Kremlin, both in its Sigma and with some other aspects about the ship. What was really funny and what really kind of affirmed for a lot of people that Russian bias was very much real was that for some reason, and I agree with the people that said this is ridiculous, they nerfed Kremlin's AA over and over and over and over and over again. And not the AA itself, not the damage that was putting out, the health of the AA mounts. And I released a video talking about these nerfs, and I think one of them was titled, Is This a Joke? Like, because <laughs> it was the third time they had nerfed the uh, the AA mount's health on the Kremlin. So, nowadays, the Kremlin's AA, when it is intact, it's actually quite nice. But it's not going to stay intact, because the HP pool of the AA mounts is so little that if HE whizzes by, the mounts just fall apart. It, they're that fragile. One hit from Conqueror or Thunderer or, heck, 
anything with good HE, you're going to be completely defenseless against CVs. Which is pretty bad for the Kremlin, because the Kremlin is an absolutely massive ship. And ships like the uh, Rektalfin and the Hakuru and the FDR can just have their way with you. The Hakuru and the uh, Rektalfin, because of their AP bombs, and good god, if you miss the Kremlin's deck with their AP bombs, I don't know how you do that. And the FDR, because, well, it, it's, it's the FDR. But if you actually have Slava and play Slava, her AA is Kremlin's old AA, so it's actually pretty good, and it survives throughout the match. So that was really weird. But later on, they went, they, they got around to nerfing the guns on the Kremlin, and they cranked down the accuracy of the guns to nowadays, what you're watching on screen right now is Kremlin with Deadeye on, but for most of this match you, that you're watching, I'm not actually having Deadeye active because I'm too close in. Um, if you do have Dead Eye active on Kremlin, it is back to old Kremlin dispersion to where you can accurately hit ships at 20 kilometers. But for this match, most of the time I'm playing Kremlin like how Kremlin's meant to be played and how you have to play Kremlin to be really effective in Kremlin today. The reason I haven't even changed um, Kuznetsov out from Dead Eye yet is I'm just waiting for the uh, free reset come uh, fall. That way, no, not, not come fall, come 10.4. For Battleship Commanders, that way I don't have to spend any doubloons resetting him. Kremlin today, if you really want to play Kremlin today, you really have to be within about 13 kilometers of the target, which is ungodly close in 10.3 Wood of Warships. But if you are within 13-ish kilometers of the target, you have really good dispersion, and your armor is at its best at that range when you're bowing and angled. The thing about the Kremlin's armor is that she has amazing armor from the front. You are not doing much to a Kremlin from the front unless you have Yamato Ashikashima or Musashi and you're shooting at her nose, which is a big target. She has a huge bow. If you manage to hit the upper armor on her bow, you are going to pin the Kremlin. However, if you hit her icebreaker bow or her cheek, you're not going to be doing much to her. And that's the strength of the Kremlin, and that's how most Kremlin players will force their ship toward you. Slightly angled in, that way you can only hit the bow, which is now angled, rather than being straight on. So if you're not Yami, Shigashima, or Musashi, you can go take a height. Or you have to shoot either her 430mm belt, her 150mm um, icebreaker bow, or her 150mm armor belt. That way, you aren't doing much at all to her. Now the thing though is, being in this position, it's great when there's ships in front of you. But if anything gets to your side with even moderately decent AP, they catch your flat side, you are beyond screwed in the Kremlin. First off, the ship is absolutely massive, so they have plenty of ship to, uh, plenty of ship to shoot at. Second off, your citadel is exposed and massive. And this is something that gets passed around a lot. The notion that Kremlin can't be citadeled. Kremlin can't be citadeled because you're shooting at the part of the ship that the Kremlin captain wants you to shoot at. Don't do that. You can't win a fight against a bow on a Kremlin. That is how the ship is designed to be played. You can win a fight against a side on Kremlin because believe it or not, except for like the Yamato, Kremlin has the largest exposed citadel out of any of the tier 10 ships. It's the only ship with a high up citadel at tier 10, except for like the Thunderer and the Conqueror. So behind the Thunderer and the Conqueror, which people will say all the time, that's their weakness, their, their large exposed citadel. Okay, right underneath them, you got the Kremlin. It is a massive citadel that runs the entire length of the flat broadside of the ship. And if you hit this ship anywhere there, when you, are bat when you are flat on to a Kremlin, you will ruin their day and ru will ruin their health pool. It is, it is extremely easy to shoot once you have that broadside. All you have to do is aim at the waterline, aim a little bit up, let your shells go, and bye bye Kremlin. I've done it plenty of times on stream, plenty of times in, in videos. That's the weakness of the Kremlin. You cannot play their game. You have to flank them and murder them, and they're pretty easy to flank because once they're bow in, they are pretty darn committed. Kremlin's not a very fast ship, it's quite slow. Even with the um, speed flag on, she can only go 31 knots, which by 
tier 10 battleship standards is pretty slow, except for, you know, like, like the Vermont. Most tier 10 battleships can at least get up to about uh, 32 knots. And she doesn't have the best acceleration ever, ever, of course, too. She, she's an absolutely massive ship. Um, now, I'm not saying she's like the Vermont slow, but I'm saying it takes her a hot minute to get up to speed. So just flank the ship, shoot in its, in its side, and ruin its day. Now, the other thing that Kremlin is very good for is surviving HE spam, part because of her armor. She has a 60 millimeter deck for her central deck and her uh, bow and stern decks are 32 millimeters. So for most of the HC that's going to be landing on their deck, it's just going to be shattering, but it will be starting fires as well. But of course, the Soviet battleships get the improved damage cons, which are kind of a blessing and a curse. They have a much quicker cooldown time than normal damage cons. So Kremlins, for example, has a cooldown time of 38 seconds, and they're active for 11 seconds. So they're very short, but they cool down in under 40 seconds with the current build that I have on right now for my Kremlin. But she only gets five of them, starting out, at least. <laughs> starting out. Um, so if you're a battleship player, you know that you often use your damage con far more often than just five times in a match. Most German battleship commanders probably use theirs like 15 or 20. But this is where Kuznetsov comes in and kind of messes with the balance of the ships. Because right now, the ship has a lot of health, great armor, but limited number of damage cons, and once she's in position, she's pretty much stuck there. But Kuznetsov comes in and he has a couple of things that really give these Soviet battleships a huge boost to their survivability. So. First off, he has something called the Emergency Reserve skill, where if you get First Blood, you get an extra damage con and repair party. That's nothing to the Soviet battleships have one less repair party as well, because they have fantastic armor. Which, okay, you do have to get First Blood, blood to get that, and, you know, First Blood with Kremlin is kind of hard to get because of 20 kilometer range, but if you get lucky and hit something, or there's a cruiser that's very eager to die, you can, of course, pull it off. And he also has his Will to Victory skill, which is a very useful skill and honestly one of the most useful commander skills for these legendary commanders. And what that does is once your ship gets below 10% of your health, that activates and a free damage con and then a free heal. Now the heal is not a great heal, it's only a, a quarter of a percent for um, your HP for 30 seconds, so it's, it's not great, but in a situation it saved me many 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 a time and allowed me to get to cover so it's enough to get away but if you're like out of hills and out of damage cons it's only going to extend your life for a couple of seconds but if you have more damage cons and hills ready to go it will greatly assist you in not dying and of course with with Kutsuzov too you can get the emergency repair specialist skill which further decreases the uh, reload time on your already extremely fast damage con. So, all, all in all, Kuznetsov kind of pushes Kremlin to almost the next level. Um, definitely when the ship came out, if you had Krem if you had Kuznetsov on your Kremlin, the ship was like insanely busted. But now it's, without Kuznetsov, it's a very good tank, good at what it does, but with Kuznetsov, you're just a, a very annoying rock that won't die a lot of times. So circling back around to those main battery guns with the crazy velocity on that Soviet AP, these guns have a 29 second reload time, but we can't get a you know a 35 or a 33 second base reload time on Colombo. But yeah, that's in my opinion is the only thing on the Kremlin currently that's a little bit silly. Like these nine 18 inch guns can reload in 29 seconds if you take the reload module. But yet, you know, we're introducing so many ships that don't really have a lot of guns or a large caliber of guns, but yet they still, just because they may have a slightly large caliber for their tier or slightly more guns for their tier, they now get slapped with like a 35 or a 38 second base reload time. And really something like 33 seconds would be more appropriate, but yet the Kremlin can still have 29 seconds on its reload time. But it does, of course, only have the 20 kilometer range, and... Honestly, if you've played Kremlin before Deadeye came out, you aren't hitting Jack past 16 kilometers. 15 kilometers is really pushing it in, 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 in the Kremlin. Even in the Russian bias video, I mentioned this. Kremlin is third from the bottom in terms of average damage for tier 10 battleships. Third from the bottom. That's 
pretty bad for a ship that many still call overpowered and beyond broken. At the end of the day for me, the way I see it, in order to get within range of your guns, effective range of your guns, so like 13, 14 kilometers, especially in today's World of Warships, you have to put your ship in a very risky position. And it's built very well to deal with that position. But once you get pushed, you're kind of boned. And every large Russian ship is like this. The Kremlin, the Stalingrad, the Mosfa, not the Petropavlovsk, because that thing just can't die for whatever reason. But all of the original and older large Russian ships in the game are like this. Kronstadt too. Tremendous tanks from the bow end. Great once they get into, into position. Difficult to deal with if you fight them on their turns. But if you flank them, they just explode fantastically. And that's how I see the Kremlin today. And I just think it, it, it just has that OP-ness that got stuck with it from when it originally came out. Rightfully so, because again, Kremlin upon release was beyond broken. No argument for me there. But today, it's a far cry from what it used to be, and I just wanted to share my thoughts about the Kremlin. I've been playing her a bit more recently at, at higher tiers, seeing how she's doing, and I've been trying to push in with her and trying to use her to somewhat great effect. Uh, I've had some matches like the match you're watching right now that went on pretty well, and some matches that I barely did anything because the teams were too afraid to get within uh, 20 kilometers of each other and at that point you kind of just sit there going well I hope something happens before the game ends but anyway guys let me know what you guys think in the comments down below is Kremlin still this obscenely broken ship or has she been hammered into place recently just let me know what you guys think in the comments down below hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday hope to catch you guys in the next one